Welcome to Unscripted Faith. I will tell you, Christ has come to give us life abundant, and today is all about life. And well, but where where is my co-host? Oh, Jay. Oh, honey, you struggling? What you got? Uh, here, here. I got you. I got you. Oh, Jay, it's, it's all right. We do a couple of preacher curls here. Oh, you know what I mean? You were struggling with that, Jay. You all right? Well, you know, the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. And I guess that just ain't working for me right now. So I'm going to have to do a few more uh, scriptural presses or something along that line. <laughs> Listen, we are today going to get an opportunity to talk about life and fitness. And Jay, we all know, honey, you, you're strong. You can, I believe you can lift this and a whole lot more. I believe that. I believe that for sure. <laughs> and listen, not only are we going to talk about life and fitness and being beautiful on the inside and out, we also got my man, Kurt Weaver's in the house. You know, the PA March for Life is coming up yes. in just about a week. I'm really excited about that. It's gonna, my wife and I had a chance to MC that last year. And it's just awesome seeing thousands and thousands of people coming together to stand for life. So yes. it's gonna be great. Great show. Yes, it's a power great packed show. show. And you know, in today's society, we're constantly being bombarded with damaging, unhealthy messages about our body image that really produce death within us. While the world tries to tell us what we should look like, our guests, author, pastor's wife, and mother of four, Stacy Rioch, says it's the book, Bible that we should be turning to to help shape our view of appearance, food, and fitness. Stacy, welcome to Unscripted Faith. Thanks and it's for having me. Rio Rioch. Yes. I, I butchered that. And I would know. I butchered I it. I would know because what a lot of people don't know, a little fun fact for everybody, is that her son, who's actually in the studio, goes to school with my son. I didn't even realize at the time that he was going to be here. And I was like, man, if I'd have known that, I'd have brought Jay here. Uh, they got a little high five in there <laughs> yeah. or whatever. So shout out to my son and also to Micah. Uh, it's good to have them here, but it's so great to have you here today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Awesome. Well, listen, I want to get right into it because... Uh, I, I'm going to say it like this. In this generation, people want to preserve the sexy. Let's just be real. Let's call it what it is. I want to look good. I yeah. want to stay good as long <laughs> yeah. as I can. But, you know, you give a whole different approach. This book is how should we allow the Bible to shape yes. how we look at our body, mm -hmm. food, diet, wellness. Tell us about your journey on yeah. how you came about writing this book. Yeah. yeah. So this book did come in part out of my own story of when I was a teenage girl in high school struggling with my own body image. I actually felt like I was too skinny and I'd put on you know, my cheerleading pom-pom skirt and want to wear sweatpants to hide my legs or just thought, oh, if I was a little more filled out and curvy, I'd get a date for homecoming. Um, so I just felt insecure about myself. And then you know, fast forward that to now I'm a mom I have four kids and kind of the opposite thing happening of, of realizing, you know, oh, this baby weight isn't coming off as, as fast as I'd like. And I don't look how I looked at 22. And how do I think about that? How do I make peace with that? Um, and scripture, the Bible really helps us to get an upside down view compared to the worlds of how we should think about our bodies. Mm. Come on. I do. I feel like it's, it is bombarding. And even with your own experience, we get to talk a little bit in the green room of how those kind of lies and thoughts started to fill you. In this hour, like the Bible helps us, but we're constantly consuming imaging yes. and messages that are telling us contrary to the Bible. Right. So what, what, what can we do to fight that? What can we do to fight the messaging? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that we spend time in our Bibles, right? Yeah. That we get a godly perspective. We get a Godward perspective because if we're only looking at our Instagram feeds, yeah. right? If we're only looking at social media, we're just getting all these filtered images of what we should look like. And if we spend time in scripture, we're getting a totally different picture of what matters to God. And it's not that our bad bodies don't matter. They do matter. Our bodies are significant. They're temples of the Holy Spirit and we're to care for them and steward them. But it's not about looking awesome on the beach. It's about having a body that's fit to serve, having a body that's able to put God on display and be used for his glory. 
Tell us a little bit more about, you know, the process. I know me growing up, I talked about how I was a late bloomer coming up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I was actually speaking at, um, at a St. Vincent College yesterday, and I was talking to a girl that was bullied and body mm -hmm. shamed and all mm -hmm. these types of things. Um, how, how did you navigate that? When did things change for you? Because you talk about, I put on my little pom-pom skirt and I'm yeah. ready to go. Yeah. When did you find who you were and when did you start appreciating who you were? Well, I think it's been a process. And I think included in the process is I have two daughters, one who's 16 and one who's 21. And so also really wanting to help give my daughters a godly vision of how they should think about their bodies, how they should think about beauty. And, and again, not that we can't wear makeup or we can't, you know, that we don't want to take care of ourselves, but kind of what's the backbone to that? What's the foundation of why we're doing this? And, and really that we grow more beautiful as we grow more like Jesus. And I think that's a huge trans transformational point because if we're just trying to grow more beautiful through our hair and our makeup and our exercise routines, that stuff fades. We all will get older. We're not going to look 22 forever, right? Man. <laughs> we're trying, I'm going to lie. But if we're, if we're seeking the Lord, if we're seeking that imperishable beauty yeah. that yeah. 1 Peter 3 talks about, that God tells us we can have an imperishable beauty that is precious yeah. in God's sight. So I think also, you know, wanting to train my girls, to yeah. raise them up, to realize God cares about your heart even more than yeah. he cares about the outside. And that's how you're gonna be truly beautiful. How are your daughters navigating that space? Like what are practical things they're implementing to get beyond that? That's a good question. Um, and for each of them, it's probably different. My oldest daughter went on social media pretty late compared to a lot of people, not till like towards the end of high school. Um, and she realized for herself that it wasn't helpful she realized that it was, it was impacting her in a negative way. And so she actually took herself off of Instagram and social media wow. because she just felt like this, these are pressures I don't need mm -hmm. and I don't want. And I have so much respect for her yes. for doing that. Um, you know, my 16 year old, I think it's more her mom probably preaching to her <laughs> <laughs> of, of your beauty is of the heart. Yes, you are a beautiful girl, yeah. but what matters even more is, are you showing kindness to the other kids at school? Are you showing compassion? Are you sitting with the person that needs a friend at lunch? Yes. You know, are we growing more beautiful because we're acting more like Jesus? So what's the balance then? Because obviously, you know, you said the book is not a how-to, right. but you know, it's not that food and workout and exercise and all that isn't important, mm -hmm. but you're saying it's not everything. How do we find the balance in yeah. life? Because obviously, I mean, you know, you want to work out, you want to be healthy. And what if people do want to, what if I want a six pack? What if I want to do that? What is your uh, advice to people on how we should look at that? Yeah, and I, you know, that's, that's a, the constant tension, right, is how do you find the right balance? Because we can all be pendulum swimmer, swingers of going yeah. from total apathy of like, I don't care, I'm just sitting on the couch with my ice cream, to obsessing and being at the gym half the day. Um, so I think, again, it's looking at some principles in scripture. Like I think about 1 Timothy 4, 8, that says bodily training is of some value, some value. Yeah, but godliness right. is of of even more value. And I love that because that reminds us that our bodies do matter and training our bodies is good. It's good to work out. It's good to get our muscles strong. It's good to be able to be fit, to serve and to feel confident in, in ourselves, to feel attractive, that's not a bad thing. Um, but that's not what's paramount, right? I wanna be spending more time training my heart. I wanna spend more time in the word and in Amen. prayer and in fellowship Amen. to be becoming more like Jesus, more than trying to look like that person on my Instagram feed. It's so good. It's so good. So let me ask you a question then. We got a couple of minutes left. Yeah. Where are you at now? Like what is your daily routine with workout, food, yeah. and self-image and all that? Where, where do you stand now? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a work in progress, okay, but, okay. but I will say I, I love to work out. I do enjoy exercise. It brings me joy, but I have learned that I'm not going to do an exercise I hate. 
okay? So I used to make myself run, and I'd be like, okay, you've got to <laughs> run 3.1 miles without stopping. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do exercise I enjoy. Yeah, I'm going to go to my Zumba class or my HIIT class yeah. and see a friend and enjoy moving my body in those ways. Um, so I think that's helped me get a little bit more balanced. I'm not a dieter, so I'm trying to, you know, eat foods that make my body feel good, but I'm not afraid to eat a cookie or a brownie. I like sweets <laughs> just Come like on. everybody else. God <laughs> created all foods to enjoy. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm not someone that's like cutting food groups. I yeah. try to be pretty balanced in that and kind of show that to our kids too. Yes. Um, and so I think all of that has just helped me. And then again, realizing you know, I'm not supposed to look how I looked 20 years ago. God changes us. We walk through seasons of life that are hard. Mm -hmm. We raise families, we go through trials, and that does impact us. Mm -hmm. That does make some lines on my face when I've been mm -hmm. up at night, you know, yes. praying or thinking through so a hard true. decision. Mm -hmm. I've had four babies. There's, there's marks from that, but there are things to celebrate because it's how God has shaped me. I love that. Stacy. thank you so much. We love the book, Beautiful Freedom. And we're so thankful for your message and really trying to get that, make that more pervasive within the youth and adults. Thank Thanks you. And Thanks real quickly, how can, they get their, how can they get your book? So Beautiful Freedom is on Amazon, really at any major Christian bookstore, the good book company, they can find it there. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, go get that book, Beautiful Freedom. It'll definitely bless you. And stay tuned because we've got more coming up with Kurt Weaver, my buddy. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the loss through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV, bringing you programs like Jesus the Tireless Laborer, Amen. He came to serve. He came to heal. He came to save. And he's working all the time. Even the chapter 1 of Mark, the very first chapter says, immediately he did this. Immediately he did that. And straight away Jesus did this. Straight away he did that. Straight away he did this. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. What do we see in the cosmos or on our planet? What about the detail and diversity of creatures, the sophistication of DNA, or extreme complexity of just one human cell? Evolutionists realize the dilemma. They all show design, and that demands a designer. In this episode, our guest examines the evidence of the creation model. One Race, Human, with Dr. Brad Harrop. This week on Origins. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith and listening viewers joining in with us. We just had a phenomenal discussion with Stacy Riach and my buddy is here, Kurt Weaver. He's the director of the Church Ambassador Network for the P Pennsylvania Family Institute. Phenomenal man of God, connecting pastors, keeps us up to date uh, with what's happening in elections and how you can know the different values of different people of who to vote for. He is also one of the main spearhead leaders of the Pennsylvania March for Life that is coming up. Kurt Weaver, it's so great to have you with us here mm. on Unscripted Faith. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I hope you don't mind, man, but you're my buddy, man. I love you. You're just a great man of God. I mean, I believe there's only going to be two questions when people get to heaven. Uh, they're going to ask, uh, what did you do with my son? And did you like Kurt Weaver? Because if you didn't like Kurt Weaver, you ain't getting in. There's nothing not to like about this guy. I mean, he's just outstanding. You know, I was really surprised earlier that you couldn't lift that dumbbell. I mean, I was... I mean, Angela just like out fitnessed you. Now, listen, man, I just gave you all these props and then you're going to throw me under the bus like that. 
I know, right? <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. No, I love you, brother. I do, I do like you. I think I'm going to be getting into heaven. <laughs> well, listen, man, let's get in on it. Uh, Pennsylvania uh, March for Life is coming up. My wife mm. and I had an opportunity to MC that, and we had such a blast. There's nothing like it. We are bringing a bus up there uh, next Monday to be with you guys. Uh, talk to us a little about what's happening with that and uh, what's happening with the election. How, what, what's on the ballot with Sanctity of Life? Well, yeah, I'll start with uh, the Pennsylvania March for Life, which is coming up September 23rd. So we're only like a week away, actually, week. actually a week from today. Yeah. And so it's an amazing event where we have probably close to 10,000 people that, you know, come out, uh, stand on the steps of the Capitol and make a difference, make their voices heard for uh, the unborn, the voiceless. And I think it's so important for us to create a culture that values life in all of its stages. And so uh, we're going to have some amazing speakers. We have uh, Senator Dush, Representative Brown. We have Mark Halk, uh, Tony McFadden, Wendy Burpee, uh, many other speakers as well are going to be there. And it's just a joy-filled event. Uh, Jay, if you remember last year and the previous years, we have praise and worship. It yeah. starts at like 10 a.m., uh, and then 11 o'clock, we have a rally. And then we actually march all the way around the Capitol, uh, making our voices heard for for life. And I think it's really important for us uh, as God's people. We, we, you know, we can't expect our secular humanistic world to stand up for the sanctity of life. We have to. As God's people, we have to stand for the righteousness in this world. Uh, and if not us, then who? Uh, who's going to stand for them? And so we can't give up. We can't grow weary in standing for life. You know, and you said, if not us, who? But if not now, when? There's got to be a That's time good. that we make a decision to stand up for life. Let me ask you this question. Why should someone attend the March for Life? I mean, a lot of people say, okay, that's good for them. You know, I am pro-life, uh, but why do I need to go? Why is it important? Well, because um, if you listen to the mainstream media, you would think that everyone in Pennsylvania is pro-abortion. Uh, and that's just not true. Um, in fact, we as God's people should be coming out and saying, no, actually, we care about life. And then also it shows to our elected leaders as well that there are a lot of people here in Pennsylvania that care about life and to encourage them, those who are pro-life, to encourage them to do good things in regards to the sanctity of life and then also to uh, make our voices heard is we can't expect other people to make our voices heard in this society. Well, you know, one of the questions that I have, we just had the debates last week. We saw, uh, I called it the debacle. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Everybody avoiding the different, no one wants to answer a question. Everybody gets all slippery and whatnot. But what's at stake in this election concerning the sanctity of life? We hear it mentioned in the debates. But from your perspective, uh, what's going to happen how, concerning how we should vote concerning that? Well, unfortunately, I think there are some extreme abortion policies out there that we have to be aware of. And um, certainly here in our state, in Pennsylvania, um, there's been over 30 bills introduced to expand abortion here in Pennsylvania and to even take away, uh, which I think is already extreme, our Abortion Control Act, which allows abortion up to all six months of pregnancy. Wow. Can you imagine that? Wow. I mean, everyone can wow. imagine a six month pregnant woman. You can get an abortion up to six months of pregnancy. Well, they want to do away with that and actually make it all nine months of pregnancy to take away the Abortion Control Act here in Pennsylvania. And also, uh, they want to introduce taxpayer-funded abortion on demand. And so there are some extreme things that are happening, not only in this state, but they're even talking about it on a federal level as well. And that's really why it matters. Elections do matter. Now, listen, you know, I know everyone says, you know, every, every election is the most important election ever. Uh, I, I do think elections are important. And when you're talking about extreme policies like these, uh, we have to make sure that we're voting our values, voting for life, standing up for life. 
You know, Kurt, we got about a minute or so left. I uh, wanted to ask you, you guys in the past have given out little uh, pamphlets that kind of show the different values of each candidate. If people are watching right now and they want to get more informed on that, how can they get their hands on that information? So you can go to our website, and that is uh, pafamily.org. That's pafamily.org. And there you can get the information about some of the policies, policies that are being – dangerous policies – that are being introduced, but you can also get information about uh, the PA March for Life uh, coming up next week. And we'd love to have as many people come out that day and uh, and stand for life. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, go onto our website, sign up. You'll get uh, information on a regular basis on what's happening in Harrisburg and around this Commonwealth. It, it, and I know in the past too. I don't know if I correct me if I'm wrong. That people can actually find out buses that are going. I know we have, but I think correct. we still got a little bit of space left on ours. Uh, is that also on your webpage as well? That is correct. Yeah. If you go to our website uh, and uh, click on the information for the PA March for Life, you'll also be able to find buses that are available. Well, Kurt, we love you, man. Uh, looking forward to being with yeah. you next Monday. We will be there, man. I look forward to seeing you, and we're going to cheer on life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Thank you. Now it's time for us to check in with Anna and find out what's happening in this week's Trending Now. A few Buckeye football players made a bold stand for Jesus during a student-led event on Ohio State University's campus. Hundreds attended and approximately 60 gave their life to Jesus and were baptized that night. In an interview with Fox News, former wide receiver Cameron Babb said, I think the human condition wants hope. What we're searching for can only be found in Jesus. It was an honor to see my Lord and Savior move the way he did and it was only because of him. The event was all to bring him glory. It wasn't about a football team. It wasn't about anything else besides Jesus Christ and this country, America. As a CTVN family, let's remember to keep all our young people in prayer. I'm Anna Schmidt, and this is Trending Now. That is so powerful what is happening around the globe, really, Jay. But what happened at Ohio State University, yeah. having football players who are full of Jesus impacting those who are there. I think you, you were speaking earlier with Kurt and, and just talking about the importance of this moment and how issues like life there. And even as we were talking with Stacey, those, those spaces of social media. And we're really in, I think the point is, we're in a cultural battle. Yeah, and, yeah. and these are the spaces that we must be able to, as believers, be vocal in and be influential in dominating the conversation. Yeah, you know, you mentioned about culture, and I think one of the things that's important is I'm listening to the interviews today with Stacy and with Kurt, uh, what's really important? Yeah. You know, uh, priority is very, very important. And so you take a look yes. at like, is it wrong to work out and all those things? Not at all. Right. But at the same token, not to the point of where that becomes my everything that's and I it. neglect the more important things. Same thing with dealing with voting and the election. Is the economy important? Of course it is. But you know, the sanctity of life is so important as well. So I just think we're in a day and hour, or like you said, it's all about the culture, you know, and the culture we have to get is in the word of God. We have to understand what does the Bible Bible say. Yes. And that's how we have to live our life. If the Bible says that working out is of some importance, yes. give it some time. Come but on. then there are some things that are more important and even dealing with life and all of that. I mean, as you know, we have a pro-life pregnancy center, yes. very important to yes. us. We are staunch advocates for life. We were just on the Pitt campus uh, speaking uh, this past weekend, uh, just discussing and encouraging people to stay in the fight for life. <laughs> So what are you seeing, Jay, like when I hear about these stories like OSU and then you're talking about being on Pitt's campus, talking about an issue like the sanctity of life, what are you seeing among the college students as far as where they're standing with that? And Well, think about what Kurt just said. He said there's a big movement out there saying, oh, everybody's only pro-abortion, right. pro-abortion, pro-abortion. And the reality is there are students out there that are standing for life. Yes. We were at St. Vincent College on S Sunday night mm -hmm. and we were at Pitt on Saturday night speaking to college students and they were rallying around life, the word of God, weeping, talking about how they want to see God move. Just like we saw in Ohio State, there are yes. people out there. And one thing we have to realize, there are more with us yeah, than on. there are with them. And the wow. problem
problem is that the world That's has it. told a lie terribly while yes. the church is telling the truth poorly. Ooh, preach that. It's the truth. It's just I mean, the truth. that's good, Jay. And it's and I think because the world has and that's why Cornerstone is so important. The world has um, so much uh, media backing. I mean, it's in the world that that the, those believers, those who believe like us, those who don't, all they're hearing is the world's perspective. And it makes right. places like Cornerstone so important and significant. We have to be, again, we have to be heralds that are talking about life, that are going on to That's the right. college campuses, that are supporting our local pastors and, and missions. Um, yeah, it's, that's a powerful way to put it. You know, and I wanna digress just for a second because I know I'm talking about life and all these yes. things, but something that was mentioned, I would love to have your perspective on. I'm sure the people at home would like to hear it as well. Uh, you have daughters, correct? Yes. How are you going to shape them yeah. with their identity and things like that, oh. being a woman? Oh, Jay, that's, that's my whole thing. <laughs> That's my whole thing. Yeah, I, I pour in the word of God and I'm always emphasizing in every moment, whether we're watching a TV show and honey, I, I watch what they're watching. I don't let them get on iPads by themselves in rooms or on iPhones. I'm always monitoring what they are watching. Yeah. And even in those moments, there are these subtle lies that are spoken and I will always insert the truth. And I've done that since they were little. So now it's gotten to the point where my 11 year old and eight year old were looking like, mm -mm. they're looking, talking to the TV. Mm -mm. Mommy, why she believe that? She needs to know who she is. She yeah. just doesn't know who she is. So it's important, like Stacey was talking about, pouring that word in, getting them into a habit of assessing, well, is this actual truth? based in Christ, who is the truth? Or is this something that I'm just ingesting and it could change how I see myself and the world? Uh, it's really, I think, one of those spaces that you have to, again, like Stacy said, habitually be in process and progress in it. How about you with your son? Well, we, a lot of the, the, you mentioned about um, media and technology. Yeah. Obviously, we're always monitoring. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are not watching what yes. your children have going on in their tablets, things like that, there's so many things they're being subject so to. Many. Even some of the video games, like they got yes. this new thing called Roblox. Yes. I mean, all the kids are playing it. And there's nothing wrong with it in, yes. in some capacity. But then there are some things on there that we challenge our children on and say, I'm sorry, that's not going to go on in our home. Yes. Yeah. I mean, these are spaces that the world gets woven into yeah. them. And we wonder why. Oh, why are there hearts leading them over in this direction they've been taught otherwise well yeah if you're taking a Sunday service as the only space that their value is being explored and the Word of God is being pumped into them you're only gonna get a fraction of that coming out of them what you pour in is what comes out amen amen well ladies and gentlemen we hope that you have been blessed by today's edition of unscripted faith and listen i want to encourage you to have conversation with your children just like we're having here conversation with other people around you it's amazing how the holy spirit can do something completely unscripted when you allow the faith of jesus christ in you to be shared with others so stand strong in god's word today and know that he is with you and today is going to be a great day for you Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.